What's what up, up you cowards? cowards? Oh, wait, I just said, what's up, cowards? Uh, All right, what up, you cowards? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. What what's up, up you cowards? Cow Oh, oh you, you were it saying, <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> no, this is better. Use this. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Three, two, two one. one. What's, what's up, up, you cowards? cowards? Bro, you did it wrong again. <laughs> you uh, you what, what's do up, not cowards? belong in television. Zach. What's up, cowards? Look at me in the eye. What's up, cowards? Okay, ready? Three, two, two one. one. What what's up, up, cowards? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. weird because we've done that much we've... work in front of cameras and now it's like... But it's been a few warm dinners between being in front oh, of Oh, yeah. It yeah. feels unnatural for sure. I Half remember when we phones. first walked into the villa as well. It was like... It was, yeah. You feel well, anxious. Even when you um, when we were in Sydney doing the promo shoots, that was like a big eye-opener because we... um, Yeah, it was my first time in front of a camera and I was shit myself. Yeah, me too. And I had a mohawk, which didn't um, didn't, <laughs> didn't help. I remember <laughs> looking through those photos. I was like, oh, at least I got a couple good ones. And sure enough, they didn't use the good ones. <laughs> that is the worst photo of me you, possible. You could have got done dirty more than what I did. <laughs> That's for sure. Did you fake tan before you on? Yeah, hell yeah. I couldn't tell. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you had to have sunnies on to, uh, <laughs> to look at the photos. Um, yeah, so we've been meaning to, um, well, we've been talking about starting a podcast for what, six months now? Well, yeah. we were talking about it in the villa. That's how excited we were. Yeah, so it's good to finally be able to get uh, our voices out there, I suppose. Yeah, tell our side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of you was at home, like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> we feel like we've been on the right side of history this whole time. <laughs> and that has just not come across on TV. No, until you read the comments online, <laughs> which we love. Yeah, we love, we love. So we've got a few key points we're just going to yeah, go over. And then it's our first episode. We're kind of winging it. We're, um, we've got what we want to talk about, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, we're rusty. We're not experienced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In many fields. Yeah, yeah. So the first question is... What were you doing before the villa? <laughs> the same ones that I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> Being <Nah>. a loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, nah, what was I doing before? Um, like, it is quite a long time ago because it's been, you've got to think, we filmed in um, August, September, and then it didn't air till November, December. So now it's February. It's like, it is six months. So um, before, I guess, August, I was... Um, just working on tower cranes but i was working like six seven days a week um yeah i was there till you know seven o'clock each night up before dark up before the sun and home <laughs> in the dark <laughs> oh, is that right <laughs> yeah um so yeah and i guess um i've kind of changed that around now i'm um i think i've got more of a work-life balance i think you've helped with that <laughs> a bit more time to play than working hard but um yeah i was just working on tower cranes um I'd had about a hundred situationships in six months. Um, that, yeah, all failed. So I wasn't really seeing anyone seriously um, all of last year. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Like, I didn't do any travel in the last, like I love traveling. Didn't do any travel um, much before uh, that I went into the villa. I'm just trying to think like, I'm pretty much doing the same thing now. Yeah, just, just more, working and yeah. chiseling away I was partying things. very hard still like, didn't matter how many hours work I'd do during the week, I'd still um, find time to, yeah, unleash myself yeah. Friday to Monday. <laughs> well, not much has changed. <laughs> nah. Not much has changed. Before I went to the villa, I actually moved back to New Zealand to study. That's right. So yeah. I was doing communications media. And when I applied for Love Island, I actually lied on my application. And I said I was living in Australia because it said you have to be living in Australia to apply. Yeah. And then once I got the interview, I was like, okay, I need to get out of here. So I messaged my tutor. I was like, please, can I just do the rest of the course online? I had like a month left. Yeah. And then I shot over and did the interviews and then And you on. lived with your brother for a month. Yeah, I yeah. stayed at my brother's house and that was good. You know, it was just just chiseling away and just waiting to hear back from yeah. you two. It took, like a, it took like a month to know if I was actually on. It was a bit of a weird period because you were so excited and then you're like, I don't know. I don't you, want to eat my hopes up too exactly, high. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And because yeah. I had applied a couple of years ago and um, so I knew the this the stages so i was kind of like i've been to this stage before and then i knew the rough time of how long it would take for him to respond after medium yeah and it was the next day this time but when i didn't get on it was like you didn't hear back for you know a couple of weeks saying you're unsuccessful so as soon as the um the police check went through the next day i'm like sorted i'm on yeah which i failed by the way <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so expectations wise going into the villa, I think we've both already talked about this quite a lot. Yeah. We didn't expect that we were going in there meeting someone 
to fall in love with. Yeah. I don't think that was the expectation. It wasn't the expectation, but um, I'm going to bring her up. Like Phoebe, obviously everyone knows I had a bit of history with Phoebe um, in the past. And she was obviously very successful in finding love uh, in Mitch, who's a great fellow, by the way. Zach and I are very fond of Mitch. Um, so yeah, watching her fall in love and like, it looks like genuine love um, on Instagram anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it looks like genuine love. So there was that little bit in my mind where I'm like, hang on, maybe I could find someone but i was very doubtful yeah well and i was right <laughs> <laughs> you're hard to love <laughs> yeah when i went in there i was like i remember before i left my mom's like you might even come back with a girlfriend and i was like i don't think i will because i just i think it was just like what's the odds of meeting someone that you have exactly. that kind of connection with after a few weeks until you get in there and then everything changes well for me it did anyway oh, absolutely and then i feel like it also helps that you are so in the zone there you've got no external factors like you can't hit up a girl on instagram and be like or oh, reply to a story or yeah 3 a.m you can't say what up sis yeah i'm coming over yeah so you're like all your energy and all your focus is on the girls in the villa so it's like i feel like it just makes it so much more serious and meaningful than... well connections develop like yeah 10 times the rate of like a normal connection Even with boy on boy <laughs> yeah. literally so i think expectation wise when i went there i was just thinking worst case scenario it's a free holiday in spain Exactly. And, and that's know, what the producer said no as well, that. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think that all changed when Lucinda walked in the door because this guy's eyes, you literally were like a possum in a fuse box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, she's, she's so beautiful. And I, I had seen like a couple episodes of the season she was on, but yeah. I remember watching it with my friends and she walked in and I was like, that's the hottest girl I've ever seen. I remember saying oh, that to my friend. And you said that to me. So when I called my friend when I got out of the villa and yeah. I was like, bro, you're not going to believe what's just happened. This is my girlfriend and showed him. He was like, what the heck is going You're on? You're punching. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I knew that you were so cute because I had no idea who Lucinda was. Yeah. And then Zach's like, You're that Lucinda. No way. Yeah. So it I'm was like, wild. It was wild. And then I think like building that connection with her and then learning about her, I just, it was just, yeah. yeah. It was something I could have never predicted happening. It but, was a bit, a bit like a dream. Like, it was literally. Because you. You, you, you were like, I guess, like, you don't want to call yourself that, but you're a bit of a fan of her before she come on out. <laughs> I wouldn't season. say a fan. It's like, I didn't, I didn't like, have but her you, on Instagram and would... follow her on Instagram. I didn't know anything about her. I was like, I'd seen, like, a few episodes. Did she follow, did she follow you, one of your noble 600 before the show? <laughs> no, no, she wasn't one of the, the loyal 600 followers. <laughs> Shout out to the original 600. I think, I think it was, like, 590 boy followers and 10 girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Good 10 rate. girls were all related. Good ratio. <laughs> <laughs> My sister, my mum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I remember, yeah, clearly when you... Because I think we had a lot of, like, guys, we, Zach and I hit it off day one. Like, um, it was just wild. And I, I'm i like, I'm not going to relate to any of the guys in here because I've watched... I haven't watched a full season before of Love Island, but the snippets that I see, I'm like, them boys are not my... I wouldn't roll with them on the outside. I wouldn't yeah. hang with them. They're just, like, a different breed. But that all changed, like day one as soon as i think we literally clicked straight away literally like, but instantly. i thought the same thing i kind of went in there thinking like they're all gonna this be slogs <laughs> yeah i was like this is a competition yeah. like I, I i was saying in my interview i'm prepared to stand on toes exactly and i was prepared as we saw i think we might have stood on too many toes <laughs> we, we squashed them <laughs> so yeah that was like my angle going in yeah yeah with guys absolutely. anyway so i was shocked that like we built probably and the strongest connection out of anyone exactly Boy and girl, whatever. Like, I don't think it's. I think it's unbreakable, and I think the comments and all the social media and everything like that um, agrees. Um, but yeah, we really did click day one, and um, yeah, I'm grateful for it. But Zach and I have like talked. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but like you're you're the life of the party type of thing. So when yeah, you, so yeah. when you well, come in, yeah, but when you come into a um, a, like a a situation where everyone's the same in their group yeah. back home, it's kind of like. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm getting to? Yeah, no, I I'm see what you're getting to. I'm taking the roundabout way. Yeah. yeah. It's, like the, it's like the top competition exactly. you could possibly have. Yeah. So it's like normally for me, it's like going for a girl I yeah. want. There's not really anyone like I'm competing with, In New so Zealand, you're competing with all three no, people. No, but not competing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But in terms of like, you know, you're at a bar and there's like... And you back yourself There's in. different niches yeah. of people, you know? So you normally are like you're one of the sole people in your niche. Yeah. You know? So when you're going into the environment, That's a way of explaining it, guys. when you're going into the environment and it's like, 
the guys that are all at the top of their niches. Yeah, yeah. It's like... You see them as actual competition. It's like, oh, wow. Like, like I, I, <laughs> I'm going to get dirty. I take my boys from back home. I love them to death, but I take them out. I know that they're, not, they're going home empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Any given day. After we finished filming, what did you find that the challenges of being on TV and having a public relationship slash leaving the show single were? So what do you think the challenges of being on reality TV were post-show? I think the problem is... Um, well, I've got two main problems with that. Well, they're not problems. They're probably good problems to have, but um, I feel like the difference between before I went on the show and after um, in the public eye, you've always got eyes on you and like you can't just... I, I've Growing up, I was a bit of a dickhead. Like I yeah. was pretty loose. I would like on the on the source and stuff like that. I was pretty chaotic and um, I will do a lot of things that I would regret. Um, yeah. I'm not going to name too many examples because they're probably quite bad, but... Um, I just feel like now that you've got eyes on you, people know who you are. Um, <clears throat> you tend to not, you know, partake in those type of things. Like you don't go yahooing down the street at 4am. Yeah. Pissing on the wall or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's probably straightened me out a bit. Like, um, yeah, it just made me think about stuff before I do it, especially when I'm out and about, like um, drinking at nightclubs and stuff like that. Um, and You've seen it time and time again. People literally have their phones like that. Like, you're going to be caught in the act every single time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I feel like that's one thing that's changed. But um, also, yeah, touching on girls, like, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like it's going to, It's a little bit harder to find a genuine connection after being on the show because um, you don't know whether, like, they're in it for the right... It sounds cliche, but in it for the right reasons. Like, you don't know who's trying to... Yeah. You know, yeah. No, I agree. You know I what think I'm I think for me it was like the hardest thing coming out of reality TV is like definitely you get crucified by public opinion if you yeah. look like a schmuck on the show, which I did. And like you say like it does kind of feel like at times it's like you you can't go to the mall with a ripped shirt and some poo which stains is, yeah. on your clothes because it's like someone's going to be We're not saying anything's wrong with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do that if you if you yeah, want We to. walk around home like that. <laughs> but it's with like nothing. it's like you know you walk out and you're tired. Yeah. And like then people come up or take photos of you. Like cuz yeah. a lot of people hated us obviously. So we're not taking photos and from behind yeah, the bushes. Exactly. It's kind of like oh this is uncomfortable. But I've got an example like Zach and I were um with Zach's family in um St Kilda. This was while the show was still airing and um we were just walking past a random tram stop and like there was this bunch of girls literally like just feel me as like walking past and it just makes you feel uncomfortable for like a minute for like a minute yeah yeah so like what do you do i don't know whether it's because we're holding hands or what, what... <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing so like i think that's like one factor and then also it's like because we know what happened in the villa we know the full context yeah, and yeah. we saw the good the bad <clears throat> and the ugly in everyone exactly we knew that the show was painting people a certain way like Especially us. Their bad Especially us, yeah. Obviously, we're toxic imbeciles and we did stupid stuff and, in there. And losers. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> it's like we saw it with everyone. So, like, it was nice having people reach out to us and say, hey, look, we know it's not you. Yeah. But it's like, it's hard when you've got, like, everyone saying, exactly. you're this way, this is how we're going to label when you, you. When you're nearest and dearest, no, that's not the case. Yeah, but yeah. then the, that's, like, random people, like, you are who I saw on that edited show. So that's who you, you are. You have in no real life. redeemable personality characters. You're a jackass. Yeah. You should go and if and do that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that was the hardest yeah. thing for me because it's like but, you can't prove them wrong because exactly. it's like we're not on TV anymore and we can't. Like, it's like, but in Australia, it's tall poppy syndrome. You, you're guilty to prove. Sorry, you're guilty till you prove it innocent. Yeah, it should be like, give, yeah, give everyone a chance. Yeah, but I feel like. It was good in the sense that it did, it did make me reflect on those bad qualities you of myself. You and me both. Like, we saw it. Like, I was watching it playing back. And there's a few, like, clips that I remember looking at and just being like, why did I oh, no. say that? Oh, and no. when I said it, my mind was thinking, like, this is a good thing to say. Exactly. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? Zach and I, during the show, we're like, we're killing this. Like, people are going to love we're us. We're so home. funny. By the end of the episode, why we knew that that wasn't the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bad. But, um, and I also think it didn't help that all of our funniest moments were just kept in Villa exclusives. It, so people couldn't see literally. like the full aspect of our character. Whereas Reed as well, he got done the worst. Like, I've, I've, the... like we've watched the show and it's yeah. like, 
you can't tell what Reed's like as a person from watching it. It's like exactly. he's just this weird kind of calculated. We, we, which he is, but we love him for that. But he's also funny. <laughs> I he's always, weird but funny. <laughs> I always say to people, I'm like, he's like Jim Carrey, but you can't see that in the as, show. As soon as you told me that, I literally can't unsee it. Yeah. And if you go watch a Jim Carrey movie, now yeah, you'll think of Reed. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. So that I think the, the most challenging thing was like trying to cope with like people seeing the horrible side of my personality, yeah. which is definitely there. And not being able to show them that I've actually got a good side as well. And like, I do reflect do on know? the dumb stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, My mum thinks so. <laughs> My mum thinks I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree completely. And I think we, we talk about that quite a bit at home. Um, and another thing we bring up is um, all the hate that you do get online. You see someone in the street and no one will... Oh, yeah. I've pretty had, much nobody um, says anything bad to your face. I haven't had anybody come up nobody. to me and say anything negative. So. And the, the publicist from Channel 9, who we absolutely love, did mention that. Like, the people that are, are writing that stuff are not going to be the ones crossing in the street. Leaving the show in a relationship, for me, I found, like, it was like everyone felt like they were a part of it. And then everyone had an opinion on it. Yeah. And everyone thought they knew our personalities well enough to say whether we should or shouldn't be together. Yeah. And I think that was probably, like, the weirdest thing for me. Like, because it's like, you've got all these people that have zero clue who you are. Absolutely, yeah. Saying... Oh, she's Telling this. You what you should she's be. She's that, or he's this, he's that, and it's like, in any relationship, you'll have hurdles, but it's like that's something you just cannot prepare and for. I think, like, I can't speak for you, but going from, you've never had been in the spotlight in a relationship, mm. and um, going from like, I guess, being single to in a relationship to being in the public eye as much mm. as what you were. Like, you were that relationship was probably the most public one out of i would say all of the love islands because of obviously lucinda in the uk and um i guess is lucinda the first non-australian to go on the show i think so yeah i actually so you, know. you've touched like a whole different you know yeah i've never thought about that audience it was weird but so it's it, kind of nice getting messages from people from the yeah, UK. yeah absolutely like it, it pros and cons for everything but um yeah i would say it's probably the most ho high profile yeah person that this love on australia's head yeah on. so it's yeah. like you're gonna be in the spotlight more than anyone else has before yeah. which would be really hard i could imagine well it was weird especially because we were meant to keep it secret when we weren't filming so like when we touching were... on that do you mind talking about what happened when you did leave the villa because obviously it got leaked eventually got leaked um and stuff like that yeah so after the show wrapped up we had already had discussions in the villa i was like look i'm prepared to live wherever you are like yeah. you will become my home and you've lived abroad for a girl before so this is it's not like fake like, like no, people yeah. assumed well yeah. no yeah the thing for me is it's like i i think i said in my interview like i'll move mountains for the right girl like Hell yeah. i'm an obsessive romantic like i just yeah my whole world becomes about my girlfriend and, it, and it's, it's kind of sad which it did yeah <laughs> and it did and it's i said about to me her, at one point. i was like i was like <laughs> my home will be where you are i'm gonna like we're gonna make it work so the, the yep. plan was so i shot straight to the uk and we were there for two months yeah and it was probably one of those wild experiences in my life in terms of like we did so much we went to paris you know i went to portugal yeah we went around the uk and then she's got like her career which is something like a side of life. Which she's done really well, by the she's way. She's done yeah. extremely well. I've never seen that side of like Yeah, and that's what I touched on before. It would be crazy to it was. go from what you were doing in between opportunities yeah. <laughs> to in the spotlight over in the UK, which is so much bigger than Australia. Well, I wasn't in the spotlight because the show hadn't aired and I only had 600 followers. Yeah. So it was like, we were going to these events and it was just like, it was just like, it you, was a lot. And you had to but it was lie. normal for you, her. You had to say that you were her... I had to say that I was her yeah. manager's boyfriend. That's right. So it was like, the, like, if someone saw us kissing, they would have been like, why is she kissing her manager's boyfriend? <laughs> but it well, was funny. Freeze a crowd, you but we, it, was, it was a great experience. It was so good. And then yeah. we were like, afterwards, like, you're going to come to Australia. And then eventually I'm going to move to the UK. And we just yeah. sort out all the dots and crosses. So yeah, absolutely. It was, a, it was a crazy experience. Like... But then, obviously, I didn't have a working visa, so I had to come yeah. to Australia and get back into things. Back into real life. Back into real life. Um, all right. So, what everyone wants to hear. The juiciest tea this is, from the yeah. villa. 
This is what we came here for. This is what we you guys want to see. Silence, yeah, for too long. You guys don't want to hear all the other bullshit. <laughs> you know this what? is what they want to get to. We are sick and tired of <laughs> other islanders thinking that they can say whatever they want and Dragging come out on beautiful stone. names through the mud. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got a few situations we can yeah. think of. I think I'll let you take the lead on maybe some tea, and then I'll have a go. Yeah. What's nice, a situation? Nice what, was, what was one of your like a situation that you think like people would be interested to know about? Probably the biggest one that stands out for me is which I'm shocked that it didn't air. Um, is probably our fight with. Well, there's a lot of people involved. Um, there was a bit of a yeah, a bit of an argument with Nate, which is not surprising because there was a lot of arguments between us guys, which it was all friendly. It was all friendly in the end. And we have laughed with Nate about this um, at the Arias and he agreed. He's like, what in that air? That would have been so juicy. And yeah. um, we thought it was going to be amazing. But um, yeah, there was just a few disagreements during this certain day and um, and a few things were said. I can't remember exactly. Like it's, it is hard to remember word for word, but we were, yeah, just kind of going toe to toe. There were a few comments here and there um, the night before, the night before this certain day, Sam and I were lying in bed. Um, which, by the way, this is probably a little bit warranted because Sam and I were like, you know, making sex jokes and doing the, oh, daddies and all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we're doing lots of them ones. And, um, and yeah, Nate was in the bed next to me, like literally um, pulling a meter over and he was, he'd had enough, which is in hindsight, fair enough. But he um, said a few words and um, to Sav, not, not to me, but to Sav and, um, yeah, and then the next day this this all come up um, during a bit of a heated argument, and yeah, it, it got pretty confrontational. Like there was, we we're kind of all up in each other's face. There was Zach, myself, and Nate kind of going toe to toe, and then there was then everyone our, came down. Our, our respective partners at the time, our couples, which was um, Tia was with Nate at this stage, and I was with Sav, who I was obviously going in the bat for. Zach was with Lucinda, and yeah, yeah it was kind of just like an all in and. We didn't know, but um, until like a, a couple of weeks later that, yeah, they had security at the door ready to go. Like it was actually pretty heated and it was, it was full on. Like it was nearly on. That was hilarious because I remember, I remember we had a little row down at the fire pit. Yeah. Me, you and Nate, because you, you said to Nate, I didn't like that you said this, man. And then to be fair, like with everything that had already happened with Lucinda and I, like we were already a tiny bit frosty with Nate. Yeah. And so, but correct. he had, I feel like looking back, I would have been annoyed if I was Nate too, but Absolutely, he just, he just handled the situation. He a bit handled wrong. it poorly. And then, but then we saw that as an opportunity yeah. because it had been like, he had been throwing us under yeah. the bus and you guys are terrible so, people. I've just, so we were like, finally, he's made a mistake. And we, yeah. <laughs> it's your turn, buddy. <laughs> we, we saw an opening and yeah, went for it. Yeah. And then so, I remember we had a little go and then he walked up the stairs and then he came back down with Ollie right. and Tia. Do yeah. you remember? And then he brought back up. Yeah, and then and then we were down there and Lucinda and Sav were sitting down there by this point. And yeah. then it was just like it was all on. It was. Like it was there was there was yelling. There was a lot. Yeah. Like we, we were toe to toe. Like it was it was pretty full on. And um yeah, the fact that security was at the door, like ready to to come out. I think they nearly told him to come out. Yeah. Um so yeah, it was full on and we were shocked that they didn't air because that's like a huge part of well, it's not a the huge context part of it. was so important. It was so important, yeah. Um, for like other things that then carried out, like why exactly? Like Tia said to Nate, like you always get involved with things. You always get involved in everything because um, yeah, with the the Abbey drama which followed. I think that would have been the following day or a couple yeah. of days after. Um, but yeah, so that was probably the biggest one that stands out to me. That was funny, yeah. But like the thing is as well, the cameras don't show that immediately after every confrontation, we're all like, Look, Absolutely. we're living together. Let's put it past us. Exactly. It happened every time. Every it single did. argument. I like they cut out that me and Nate after the first argument, we literally hugged it out. And yeah. I was like, I'm so sorry, man. Like I didn't When you come to your senses. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry, man. Yeah. And then but it was like we're constantly like going at it but it was funny i think that's good yeah I, I was shocked that they didn't surprise that and, uh, sorry they didn't hear that as well yeah yeah and props to nate like standing up to both of us like you, you got to give it to him nah <laughs> we, yeah credit where it's due yeah nate was i just viewed him as like my main competition yeah you know what i mean yeah. in the beginning and it was kind of fun like i think him and i look both back look at it and it was like that was 
fun. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Would no have had it any other way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what do I think? I found it interesting how they didn't include Sav and Aiden's kiss in the show. See, I haven't heard about this. Like, I've only... I, I think found... you've touched on it, but like, what, what did happen? Because this is kind of like so they fit. they got together, yeah, but it didn't get shown in it. And then Sav saying she might have a connection with Aiden. That so she when was explore. this during the? When did they kiss? When Aiden first come in? No, it it happened like after Tyra and him had called it quits. Yeah. Okay. I remember. Yeah. I, I remember now. Yeah. 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 And so it must have been just before Aiden left. Yeah. So but I think that kind of made it weird as to why Sav's like, oh, like. We're like upset that Aiden left because yeah. it was like that was a connection that they were exploring, but they kind of just cut that out completely. Yeah. So it made no sense as to why she was saying, oh, I'm gutted Aiden's gone. And it goes to show because they did form a connection on the outside afterwards, which we'll touch soon. But yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of a serious thing in there for him. Literally. So that I found that interesting. Um, any other interesting tea? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, this is. I think, I don't know, have we said this yet? But this is Zach and I's first podcast we've appeared on, which it happens to be our own since the show. Um, not from a lack of offers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's out there. <laughs> um, no, this is the first time <clears throat> either of us have appeared on a podcast since. And um, it's just been funny. Like, we haven't been looking into um, the other Islanders' podcast appearances in depth. Like, we haven't been, you know, keeping a close eye on them. But we have heard a few things about... A few people talking about us. Yeah, we get sent a few clips here we, and there. We see it? you guys. Yeah. Don't worry. We, 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 know, we know what you're doing out oh, there. Oh, I thought we were friends. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out we're not. Turns out it's our turn to slag them off. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I was listening to one just in the last couple of days. It might have even been yesterday on my drive home. It just came up on my Instagram. I think um, Georgia shared it. And it was her on the, um, I'm not going to name the podcast, but yeah, she was on a podcast. And yeah, she just said one of her, I kind of like, it was a long listen. It was like an hour. So I'm like skipping it, skipping it. Yeah. I didn't want to listen to all the other stuff. But um, yeah, I found a little bit where I think she said that she, the girls asked her if she had one regret. Yeah. And um, Georgia, it's pretty obvious what she was going to say, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 she was going to not giving it to Trent, yelling at him, not giving it to him. But um, yeah, so I think she, it was something about like, I don't know, sticking up for herself or. Something like that. I think um, it was, she said that after um, you said that she wasn't right in the head, she was annoyed. Like her biggest regret was that she didn't come and give it to you. Come and give it to me. And um, because I was saying that she lied and didn't, didn't wake up on the day, but and appropriately tell me that she wasn't interested, which I stand by that to this day. She didn't properly have a conversation with me until I knew that her and Nate were in the bedroom, which I went and... Um, that was actually, I couldn't believe watching it back because I don't think any of us knew that she was kissing Nate at the exact same time, she's kissing you. Yeah. I couldn't believe that watching that back. Um, I was like, oh my goodness. I didn't wild. even know that they were kissing. Well, I remember we used to do that at like 14th birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Um, but yeah, so yeah, she didn't properly, yeah, address the situation and um, didn't tell me that she wasn't interested as she um, thought she did. So um, yeah, I think she she thought that I was lying and, Thought that I was, you know, being a bit of a dickhead about it all. So she wishes that she'd um, given it to me. Gone stuck What's into giving it to you? Yeah, it means she got stuck, to get into stuck into you. Yeah. Yeah. Which I just find hilarious, Zach, because do you know what I'm about to say? What? She's been in my DMs <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> what? While she's with Nate? I don't know. No. I I, I'm, I'm not sure, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think she might have needed a place to stay very early in the year. I'm not sure if they're on a break or not. Um, but yeah, she might have been stuck in Melbourne. And who do you call? <laughs> the bloke you stuffed over on Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It so is hilarious. She really did want to get stuck into you then. Maybe she, <laughs> maybe she, maybe not in that way. <laughs> maybe she's maybe, maybe I got it all wrong. Oh my goodness! But she's back with Nate now. She's back with Nate, and um, I'm happy for him because if they're happy, then go yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. Nate's a good guy. I really, really he, like he's Nate. He's a great and actually, guy. Actually, we got to give Georgia credit where it's due. Like she's been so good to she's, us after the show. Bro, she's gorgeous. Minus the podcast. Funny, funny story. A little side note. Well, it's relatable, but I was um, it was New Year's Day. This was the day before she. Hit me up for a bit of accommodation. Um, and 
<laughs> I'm not an Airbnb, by the way, Georgia. Um, <laughs> she, she, um, so me and my twin brother, who's gorgeous and not single, by the way, we were walking out of the, no, we we're trying to get into the Emerson. So mm. we exhausted all options on Chapel Street by 5 a.m., as expected. And um, we were at the front of the Emerson. And I'm like, I was pretty like battered and bruised by then. I'd been drinking for God only knows how long. You know how I get, Zach. Um, and we've walked out the front of the Emerson and I've turned to the right. I'm like, Cade, am I seeing things or is that, is that Georgia Murray? And Cade's like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, that's Georgia. They yelled out Georgia, a bit of a test. And she turned around. It was just the most awkward interaction. Cause it'd been the, that was the first time. Cause Georgia wasn't at the Aris. She wasn't at yeah. the launch party. That was the first time since I left. So it was a bit awkward, but she came over and gave me a hug and it was all sweet. But yeah, that was pretty funny. That's hilarious. Yeah. But it must have been a good interaction. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose that brings us to our next question. Do we have any beef with anyone in the villa? Or is there anything that you feel like happened in the villa that um, you want to talk about before we continue down this road? Any other goss? Did you, who did you, did you think there's anyone that was faking it in there? Oh, hell yeah. Give us, come on. I reckon, I think it's quite obvious. At this Clinty point. P, this is a shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a direct shout out. No. Um, <laughs> I, I love Clinty P, which is, um, it's actually Clint for those that don't know. I think that's his new rap name. Yeah, yeah, Which, yeah. Um, good on him. He's he's doing well. Go listen to his rap album, guys. <laughs> and he's Clinty P, though, isn't it? It is Clinty P. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think all the rumours that have come out about poor old Clinty P after the show, um, you know, about the, the, the girlfriend dropping him at the airport for his flight to Majorca. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, just the way that he come in with a week to go, um, look... I haven't fallen in love in a week before. I find it quite strange. <laughs> and especially not in front of cameras. Um, so I just feel like it was, yeah, maybe drop the rap crew and do a bit of acting. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think it, for me, it's quite obvious that Reed was acting. I, I think, yeah, with with the whole Clinton Sav thing, the fact that they just separated straight after, I think. Bro, did they even make it out of the motel? No. I think they came to like a conclusion very early on, like, oh look, it's been a week. Yeah, but you see on screen is a whole different thing. Like they were they were exchanging vows. Well then I think <laughs> I think it's fair at that point to then say maybe like it wasn't <laughs> I think it's I fair. Th at that I think point the writing's on the wall, Zaggy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if you are exchanging vows days before like when I say exchange vows, you do the letters. Yeah, or yeah. You tell them that you've fallen in love and that you've never been so happy in your life, even though I met you five days ago. Um, to then go to a motel room, I think I'm assuming, allegedly, this is just my opinion, probably doing the deed in the motel room. Um, and then going your separate ways and never catching up again. Come on. Yeah, but I will say with the love letters, he was saying, because we were all writing them, they didn't play any of it. Was he backpedaling? <laughs> but he was saying, he's like, like it was me, him and Kale, and he's, I have no idea what I'm supposed to write. Yeah. I've known her for five days. Yeah. But it's like, you have to write a love letter. But I suppose that they couldn't predict that the final bomb would make a genuine connection with someone. But then I suppose but, your but did he make it. a genuine connection <laughs> with someone? <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. That's yeah, fair enough. But I, in saying all that, um, I do love Clinty P. I only, I think I was in there for two days. Yeah. Um, and he was a great guy. He, so, yeah. And I haven't seen him since. Probably won't see him again. I don't know. I haven't, you know, reached out to him or anything. But yeah, great guy. He came into great the actor. villa. <laughs> <laughs> he came into the villa, and I would say him, Andy, and Kale were like the best male bombs that came Absolutely. in in terms of straight away just fit in. Straight away. Easily. And I think Aiden warmed on us, Reed warmed on us. And we were But like those guys it was just like they were in and it's like Yeah. It was very clear straight away that they're just great guys. And I take my hats off to them. I couldn't have done what they done coming as a bomb, being yeah. on the back foot. Yeah. Zach and I gave every bomb a hard time. It didn't didn't matter whether you're American <laughs> a rapper. <laughs> we were gonna come at you. Yeah. Cause we kind of thought that that was our, you know. I don't know what I thought. I don't. I genuinely. We don't know honestly, what I was thinking. in our heads, we honestly thought we were kings of the castle. Right? I literally just thought it was competition, and I was like, I gotta, like, I gotta, gotta make put sure this big these... front on. Yeah, it was just ridiculous. And then looking back, like... I'm like, why was I so mean? Man? And then a day later, two days later, when you realise that, hang on, these guys are actually good blokes. <laughs> I'm gonna go make a coffee for them. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of self reflection. Like when I was looking back on, for example, Reed. Um, Geez, I tore him to shreds. 
Oh, the first two nights. We hated Reed when he first came in. He's a freaking legend. He's and a I great guy. And I after two days. And I'm like, yeah. bro. It was like three days for me. Yeah, I'm going on four-day benders with a coward. They actually played in the Villa exclusive clips, you and I in the shower saying, I actually like Reed. He's actually yeah. the guy. And that oh, was like, he's yeah, actually Pippen. one of us. I think that's exactly yeah, what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was funny. He, I think we said we, he can roll with us or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm glad that they included that in. But that yeah. brings me to, do you have any beef with anyone from the villa to this day? Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I've only kept in touch with a very select few people, which you would probably expect if you did watch the show. So I've got, obviously, my main squeeze. He's um, on the other side of the table from me, quite obvious. Um, Kale, Reed, um, Tyra handful of the you know benders with sav um sav and i have fallen out of contact but we, we were close while the show was airing mm. um and then you got um like tyra obviously um i was with you and lucinda in the gold coast and stuff like that um so yeah i'm trying to think of beef um i don't think i got a whole lot of beef i don't think you do i don't think i got a whole lot of beef because i've i haven't like reached out to the people that i don't want to reach out to yeah like i'm not gonna fake it yeah for the sake of being like hey we're on a show together let's yeah. be mates on the outside when matter of fact like i wouldn't hang with them on the outside to begin with well that's right like we went out uh on the yacht the other day with seb as well and it's like we're happy to catch up with most of the people and yeah. it's good and, and seb's it's a like, great seb's a great guy whenever we know Love seb. that someone from the show's there we always reach out yeah. like we were happy to hang out with ryan of the arias and exactly all the yeah. boys that people would look at the show and think we had beef with yeah and we, we go along with ryan really well at the arias i think there's only one person in the villa that i would say I'm excited if it is. I have beef with to this day. Like, I don't like. Are you, you going to name names? I don't know if that's appropriate. I don't know if I need to, but can basically. I, can I say boy or girl? Yeah, yeah. Who do you, what, what do you want to ask me if it's boy or girl? Yeah. It's a girl. Ooh. Yeah. But basically, <laughs> we didn't get on super well in the villa anyway. But then when we left the villa, this girl got pretty belligerently drunk. When you le- so you left. No, 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 no. I... You got to remember, there were a lot of people that were in. No, 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 no. There were a lot of people that were still in the hotel when we got there. But this girl got. I'm belliger- going to say this with 110 percent confidence. Nah, you tell your story first. This girl got belligerently drunk, and then she just made some oh. comments to me that really like got under my skin. <laughs> yeah. Because it was just like really inappropriate, and then she spoke. Can you, to, can you give us an example? She spoke to a chaperone. She spoke to a chaperone in a really condescending and rude manner. Yep. And the chaperones were amazing. Like this, the chaperone, uh, she was just such a lovely woman, was so nice to us. And this girl was so rude to her. You're not talking about Shelly, are you? It was Shelly. I love Shelly. She had a go at Shelly. And it was like, Shelly is the nicest ever. lady ever. So then I was like, mm. and then she, she had a go at me and then Lucinda. And then after that, I was like, I just don't like this person. But then yeah. afterwards, she's been she's been nice and stuff. And I'm like, I just have no reason. Yeah, but you've to got even... a pretty pretty good reason to not be nice. Yeah, to but her. I've got no reason to like be a mate now. So I'm just like, yeah, that's the one person I would say I don't so, like. So, do you mind if I have a, a a wild guess at who this might be? You can go for gold. I'm gonna say with 110 percent confidence. I don't know would... if we should be naming names. I don't ha- know if we should name names. I don't think it's gonna ah! get us anywhere. <laughs> What's that over there? <laughs> <laughs> Who's it? <laughs> Cutting that out. <laughs> it was <laughs> guys. We're cutting that out. But yeah, yeah. I would say she's the only person I'd say I have beef with. Um, all right. So we asked a bunch of you viewers at home to ask us questions about things you wanted to know from the villa or about us in general. So we're going to answer them now. I think this is the this is the segment where we answer your guys' questions. So yeah. straight off the bat. Did we know each other prior to the show, Trent? No, we did um, have absolutely no idea who anybody on the show was. Literally zero um, clue. They do such a good job of Amazing. Like, it is here. just mind-blowing the lengths they go to to make sure that you guys do not meet each other before your first impressions. Yeah. So I had no idea who Trent was. Yeah. Zero Which, clue. literally, they call it the, the magic of TV. And w- when they said that before I went on the show, it's like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, who yeah. cares if I know who Joe Blow is? Yeah. Um, but then when you realize, like, you, you're walking up them steps around the pool. Yeah. Your heart's racing. Um, you got these other handsome fellas um, looking at you and all these hot girls in front of you. And you're like, it'd be so much shitter if you 
had already seen him before literally or if you knew anything about them yeah because it's like the interesting stuff is learning about each other literally like one of the moments people really loved between sav and i was like me finding out she's got three x's tatted on her that was crazy you know what i mean like that would that, that would all she's be got t.w on her yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so no we didn't know each other all right so um here's a good one are you happy are you unhappy about anything that was aired Oh, I think it would be crazy not to, but <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I most out of anyone probably would have reason to, um, yeah, dislike some of the stuff that was aired. I feel like it's like, for me, it was like, I said this, but you decided to air that. Yeah. And not this. And I feel like this would have like shown what my real intentions were, uh, but instead you played yeah, that part yeah. where I was like... Being a douchebag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in terms... but. I don't know. I feel like it was kind of good that they did hear what they did because I think otherwise we wouldn't have had any moments of like self-reflection. Yeah, exactly. And but I'm like a big believer in like you did what you did. You got to own it. Like yeah. we can't change what we did on there, even though we probably like to change a few things. But at the end of the day, we did those things. Like we were caught in uh. in the flesh. <laughs> there were eighty something cameras around the villa. Like <laughs> we knew they were there. We still chose to do what we did. Um, but at the same time, they can choose your narrative. Um, yeah. And I just wish ours was maybe a little bit nicer. But <laughs> at the end of the day... To play a few more redeeming yeah, qualities, yeah. you know? Like put some of the villa exclusives on the actual show. Yeah, so you could see and that like, it wasn't... If you guys at home have not watched the villa exclusives, do yourself a favour. Because I feel like if you thought Zach and I were funny, you probably didn't. But <laughs> if you thought we were funny on the show, go check the villa exclusives and you guys, I guarantee you, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, um, my mum did. She actually did. Did she? Oh, my mum loved yeah. it. And my dad. Mm. Yeah. All right. So would you go back on Love Island? It's um, an interesting question. It, it is. And yeah, it's kind of, it is, that is a really good question. Um, it's hard because you look at past people that have gone on, you know, two, three times. Um, I don't think anyone's been on four, have they? You'd hope not. Not that I know of. Um, but there comes a point where it's like, are you there for you know, for clout or are you there for love or, or whatnot. But at the end of the day, I had like such a good time on Love Island Australia that um, if I was single and um, and the opportunity arose, I think like 100% I'd go on Love Island. Yeah. Now. Yeah. For me, I feel like right now my headspace, I, like if anyone asked me in the near future, yeah. I'd probably be like, hell no. Um, however... The experience I had was good, but I wouldn't want to go back in there unless I was like actually open to finding someone again. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you got to be in the right. Like, head. like I was so open to finding yeah. someone. I didn't think it would happen, but I was. Yeah. And like Lucinda coming in the second time, she's like, the first time she went in, she's like, I don't think I was as open as I am now. Like, yeah. She she had said that she, she knew all the tricks of the trade by the time she come in second she, time. She was literally like so open you know yeah and like, i wouldn't want to go in unless i yep. was feeling that way myself again so yep. for now like it would be probably not yeah but, you know but in, stranger things have happened in saying that like i'm not going to be like looking to go on love island again it's not like yeah you're not like, going to be pursuing it it's not like yeah you, you can't make it your whole personality but um yeah i'd rather probably find a girlfriend on the other on the outside that you know that i'm so in love with that i wouldn't even ever think about that but yeah if you were single the opportunity arose. I think anyone would be stupid not to do it. Yeah, it's fair enough. So, were you ever interested in Lucinda? These are fans' questions, um, man. Like, to <laughs> be completely honest, no. Um, when Lucinda walked in, she's gorgeous, like, absolutely, but just not my type. And I think I said to you, like, that night, didn't I? I think yeah. you, you asked if I would pull Lucinda for a chat. And I said no. And I didn't pull Lucinda for a chat. Um, so, yeah, I was never interested in, in Lucinda. We already had a bro code before that as well. We, Zach and I had, there was a lot of team planning behind the scenes with Zach and I. <laughs> Everything had an agenda. Yeah, yeah. Like, nothing happened on accident. <laughs> <laughs> you um, didn't accidentally wanted, kiss Tia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Zach and I, I think we'd have a debrief every night and we'd have a game plan. <laughs> See, like, as an example of what should have aired because they would have been hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And we, even though we'd known each other for a week, we were, you know, keeping each other in check. We like, would load up on mouth spray every night. Every day. 
not for each other. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I was never um, interested romantically with Lucinda. I thought she was hilarious, all that, but yeah. There is a really funny scene on Villa Exclusives. Where you kiss. <laughs> yeah, I think it was my last night, my second last night. Yeah. And, and Zach and Lou, Lucinda were hosting um, a challenge, like an in-villa challenge. And we were in the fire pit. And um, yeah, somehow someone dared Lucinda to kiss. It was because I was the host and I was daring. Like yeah. I was making really funny like truth or yeah, dares. Like and Georgia, someone... who's a better kisser, Nate? And I was just giving it to people. Yeah. So then when it was my turn, oh, like, yeah, your turn to dare. Or was it? No, it was Lucinda's turn. And then George is like, I dare you to kiss Trent. He got, she got that one was back. So got good. Credit where credit's due. <laughs> that was so and funny. I, it was really uncomfortable because they were in a, like, I could tell that you were established by this stage. And I'm yeah. like, this is my best friend. And then I made him come over here and hold my hand while I kissed her. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, though. That was funny. Yeah. That was great from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> Props to you, Georgia. Yeah. Airbnb is now open again. So, is the show scripted is another question that came up quite a lot that question because it's such a ridiculous question i think like, yeah how could we if we if it was scripted do you think we'd we're agree we're not paid actors do you think we'd agree do you think we're good enough actors that would agree as well no one but clinny p <laughs> <laughs> no yeah it's a silly question because like oh it's fair enough because like no one sees behind the scenes of production yeah. but um nothing's scripted the craziest thing that will happen is the producers will say the villa producers that are in there all the time yeah will, might say to you Hey, you mentioned that you wanted to get to know this person. I think yeah. you should go have a conversation with them now. That's it. But they won't tell. They won't ever tell you to do they, something. Yeah, they yeah. won't say, "Hey, you know, bend backwards and release your you know, you know your insides mean? on the pool." Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got asked once. They would say jump. You'd say how high. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I think the most scripted thing, like if we were to call it scripting, yeah. would be the dates. But that's because in the villa, you can't tell the cameras are on you. You forget that they're there. Yeah, yeah. When you're on the dates, it's like there's eight people in front of you. Yeah. You've got the guy with the mic. It's not a normal date and down yeah, in the it's botanical like, gardens. Hey, so with the one I did with Lucinda, it's like, hey, how are you guys feeling about each other? Yeah. And we're like, we've already talked about this a hundred times. They're like, yeah, but we want you to talk about it yeah. again. So, you know, that's the only time that they would script it. With my yeah. date with Abby, it was awkward. It was really awkward because I already thought like there's no way anyone could walk in the villa that I would like have a bigger crush on than Lucinda. Yeah, you know what I mean? I think it was quite obvious. So when I went out to the date with Abby, it was like I just just had no intentions of, you know, flirting or taking it anywhere. And the producers were like, hey, uh, Zach, tell Abby what your nickname is in the villa. You know what I mean? So they'd just try and push the conversation along, but they'd never be like, and you knew you were following a dead scene. horse, yeah. You know what I mean? That never happened. So, yeah. yeah, it's not scripted. Like, it's, yeah. The producers, it's quite obvious that they can push for a a, a storyline that they want. But at the end of the day, you're not a robot. They can't go, they can't tell you what to do. And, like, you're in, you're in such a weird environment that you're not going to, you know, be told what to do, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? Literally. It's like, you're over in the middle of freaking Mallorca, other side of the world, like... It's like, I don't know, it's just hard to explain, but yeah, nothing scripted. And another question I got quite a lot of was, are we friends with Nate? So I think I'll just take the lead here with this one. So obviously in the show, there was a lot of tension with Nate. There's a lot of like arguments and yeah. like me slagging him off. A few of him slagging me off, but obviously not as many. <laughs> but um. On the show, it looked like we just hated each other the whole time, but yeah. it didn't show after our arguments. Like, it would play an argument over a whole episode. Yeah. But the episode's an hour. So the argument might have only happened for an hour or two And then the you dap it up and, and your then buddy afterwards, buddies. it's, yeah. hey, man, like, we're going to do this challenge, just have fun, we're joking the whole time. So when we left the villa, everything was all good. Yeah. And then I think once we started seeing the show airing, I had to reach out to him and I was like, hey, man, I haven't seen you since. I've been in the UK, but... Yeah. Like, I love you, and I'm, I remember, I I'm remember sorry that, yeah. for X, Y, Z. Yeah. And he was really good about it, and it's really good. And just after this recent situation with Lucinda, you know, he's messaged me, and he's, hey, man, I hope you're good. That's good. And, yeah, and we and hung out. And that's the type of bloke he is, I think. Every time I'm in Sydney, I see him, you know. So Nate's a really good guy. There's no beef there anymore. We resolve things. Yeah. And, 
Yeah, that's where I am at with Nate, yeah. and I know you're in the same sort of position. Yeah, I'm in the well. same boat. Um, I, I haven't talked to Nate except for like I haven't, you know, messaged him on um, Instagram. Or I haven't texted him or anything, but um, we've seen each other twice. One was at the launch party on the little island um, in Sydney. That was obviously way back in no uh, end of October. November. No, end of October. Wow. Um, so that was a one time that I saw him and then at the Aries, which was, when was Aries? November, some stage. Anyway, um, like we were, you know, hanging out, like good mates there, like, you know, laughing about that example that we um, were talking about before about how um, it didn't make it to air and how good of it would have been. But um, yeah, Nate's not the type of guy that I would hang out with regardless. Like he's just, you know, and he says the same thing. I've heard him say it time and time again. So um yeah, we're not going to push a friendship that's not there on the outside of the villa, but we both respect each other and, um, yeah, enjoyed our time together on the show for sure. Literally, 100%. <laughs> I haven't said that today yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, I've been waiting for that. 100%, man. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was zoning out after three hours of sleep. I'd just go, a girl would be in a conversation. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the lack of sleep, I don't think people realise like how exhausting right. it is. And then in the hot sun. And then all you can talk about is each other. And that's why we cried so eagerly. Oh, man, that was bad. Hey, man. Boys can cry too. Yeah. Normalize it. <laughs> <laughs> Has Trent been dating any girls Ooh. since we left the villa? I was waiting for this question because when I did the question the other day, there was about probably 30 of these. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which is a really good question for all you at home that might may be interested. Um, look, the DMs have been wild. I'm just going to start off with that. But thanks for all your lovely offers, guys. <laughs> In your dreams, I've been wild, okay, buddy? <laughs> I don't know what kind of person would be messaging you. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I I think around... I was really quiet when I got off the show. Like um, like I said, when I entered the villa, I said I'm a, a retired fuckboy. And um, when I got back home, I... Yeah, I didn't enter my old ways. I, well, I was very quiet. I... Um, didn't see it. I, I didn't go out, so I didn't really talk to any girls, um, not even any old flames or old squeezes. It's heartwarming to hear that, you know, some things don't change and you're still a toxic guy. So <laughs> 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 I hope that's doing well for you, man. <laughs> no, but... Um... Hot call in the kettle black, guys. <laughs> I hear those late night phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you got anything else that you would like um... to... Well, obviously, probably the biggest question we've had is the situation with Lucinda. Everyone wants to know the team. So I think the best thing for me right now, it's still really fresh. And that like in order to be like respectful of Lucinda and her privacy and mine, I think yep. it's better that I don't go into the details of what happened. But yeah. You know, and only you'll know when you're ready to, you know, yeah, like when the time's right, like, you know, maybe we'll like speak about it. But yep. I think, um, the, the thing at the end of the day, I love her like very genuinely. I'm fake Still anything, love her. and I hope the best for <laughs> no her. No comment. <laughs> I hope, I hope nothing but the best for her. And Zach, like, I think that's a really good way to go about it. And I respect, um, I think the way you're both handling it because. Obviously, there's a lot of a lot of people asking questions. Like even my DMs are full. Like, are they together for weeks? And the the thing is as well, there's so much speculation online. There so is. much about stuff that like some very far fetched things. And I'm like, how did people and this even is just a, this? This is a good time just to say, don't listen to everything online. Don't listen to us. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I just want to touch on something after you've you've mentioned Lucinda. Um, the last two nights, respectively, um, I have been, I wake up quite a lot during the night and I woke up about, I don't, I don't know the exact time, but it would have been around 2am each night and I've gone to the bathroom. So to go to my bathroom, I go out my door and Zach's bedroom's near there. And um, I did hear Zach on the phone both nights. This is not, I swear on my life, two nights in a row, you're on the phone to, I think it was a girl. I know what girls' voices sound like, Zach. Um, and it wasn't an Australian voice. It sounded like an English muffin voice. <laughs> so I hope your guys' loins are feeling fulfilled after hearing some insights from Trent and I. And I think it's nice to just get our perspective across 
on Love Island, but we are hoping to venture out into the depths of the world and talk about some other things. Yeah. So if you guys like this, let us know. Tell us what you'd want to hear us talking about. If there's any of you out there. <laughs> Um, all of you out there in Timbuktu yeah. it's probably just mum and dad at home listen um nah let us know what you guys want to hear and um we got, we got big plans hopefully um we want to have a few guests so let us know if anyone in particular that you would like to hear on our podcast um I feel like this last hour like we've been in here for an hour and it's it just feel like it's flown by I feel like we haven't um there's so much more we'd like to say so yeah just stay tuned guys I'm serious stay tuned thanks for listening guys yeah. and Peace out. Peace out, guys.